one. Welcome back to Don's Life. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. I know you're watching this channel because of my rebellious personality and all. But anyway, all joking aside, this is my 2021 GMC Sierra AT4, 6.2 liter, 10 speed automatic transmission. I have a three month review that if you haven't seen, you need to watch first. So I'll let you click on that link right here. I'll also put a link in the description. All right, welcome back. Let's get into the review of my 2021 GM Sierra after six months of ownership. Let's go. All right, before we get into the specifics of the video, the single best way you can help me make more content for hopefully you do enjoy is to hit that like button. Likes go a long way with helping small channels like this and helping videos like this get recommended to others. So smash that like button. All right, so we're gonna cover a bunch of annoying things that have popped up. That's gonna be something we review in a second here. I'm gonna answer a number of questions that I get from a lot of the viewers that watch my channel. And then we're also gonna do a quick overview of all the modifications I've done so far, which I pretty much have a video for every single one of them. So that's something you might wanna check out in the playlists. So let's talk a little bit about the wireless charging. I think it's great that they've updated the wireless charging and you know, it's down here, it's fine, it's out of the way. But my wife's Cadillac has hers here. So why can't we have both? This vehicle fits five people. This could be a charger as well. Yes, I know that there's uh, some available online that are aftermarket. I haven't picked one up because they look too aftermarket for me. I want something that looks, why can't we just use this tray, keep it factory looking and uh, put an induction charger uh, in behind this plate. Maybe you can, I just haven't uh, done enough research. Who knows? Now this annoying list might be trivial to a lot of you and that's fine. Um, but this does have the ability to connect to more than one Bluetooth device at a time. So you might have your phone. I have my wife's phone. That's my example here. And when, she borrows my truck and I'm in the house doing work calls and stuff like that. It'll sometimes connect to my phone. And yes, I know you can prioritize which phone you want it to connect to first, um, but it's a bit of a tug of war. So if you're sharing the vehicle with somebody and you have both of your phones connected, one is capable of being set to priority over the other. And it always seems to be uh, a fight where we have to delete each other's phones just to make sure we're not getting interrupted. I've had her drive by me on the highway and all of a sudden my music changes to something I just want to pull over the vehicle and or crash or something. Just kidding. I love all her music. Anyway, uh, just a little annoying thing I thought I'd share with you. And on the subject of just wireless connectivity, so for 2021 they do have the wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It seems to connect fine, but it seems to lose connection randomly. I use Spotify quite often to listen to podcasts. I listen to music that's on my phone. And for some reason it will show that it's still playing, but the audio will just completely cut out and I have to almost fully disconnect the phone or reconnect to get it to work as soon as I want. Or I just wait randomly 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and it'll reconnect. So sometimes I just use the wire and go the old fashioned way. Here's another annoying thing, and this may not affect everybody, but I actually noticed after I took delivery of my vehicle that the rear door gap seemed to be a little more prominent on one side versus the other. So I scheduled it with the dealership, they took a look, and what actually was happening was the door I thought was sticking out too far, it wasn't. It was the other side was sunk too far in, because I was kind of comparing them. So that's an adjustment they can make, but do look at your door gaps, because they should be uniform, this should be flush. Mine are good now, but that was something that was a little bit off when I bought it, so that was kind of annoying. Here's another annoying thing. Now I had this tinted, I took it off because I'm planning on doing something a little different. So I took the tint that I had off of there, but the reason I had tinted it in the beginning is this red does not match the tail lights. It doesn't match the red tow hooks. It doesn't match the red in the AT4 logo. It's just really out of place. Why didn't they make that black? Or why didn't they at least make it the same red plasticky color as the tail lights? If plasticky color is a term, not sure. Either way, it stands out, it looks stupid. Um, I'm gonna retint it, I'm gonna go darker, but I think I'm gonna do a cutout for the uh, lights back here. Uh, we just have to find the time to do it. 
All right, so another annoying thing is because of the design with the wheel arches, the back's not so bad. You can get away with some different tire sizes and, and play around with that. But at the front, you're a little more limited. And I know with the factory two inch lift and then adapting a lift kit or something to work with that to allow you to lift the front end a little more, but keep all the geometry proper and other component, components prematurely wear. It's just got complicated and it shouldn't need to be that complicated when for generations uh, these Sierras you've been able to throw wheels on them and upgrade your tire sizes and really just recalibrate. Uh, they've made it difficult, that's annoying. Still going to do something, I just haven't landed on exactly what. I like to do my research, you guys know that, but uh, there's a lot of good options out there to be fair, I just haven't picked the one that works for me. And one more annoying thing before we start answering some questions from the viewers is the lifter anxiety issue. So you guys know what I'm talking about. The 6.2, the 5.3, since 2019 until now, they randomly fail. Yeah, they say there's batches and certain, you know, build dates and stuff like that that are more affected. But really just not knowing that one day it could have that problem and I'd have to get a whole bank replaced or maybe all the lifters. It's fine, it's covered under warranty, but it's just a little bit unsettling. I can live with it, but it's annoying. All right, I'm gonna take the opportunity to answer some of your questions. I get lots of questions. I do my best to answer them all. Sometimes they get a little buried and it might take me a week or two to get around to some. But if you have questions, feel free to uh, send them in the comments. So the first one here, where did you get your running boards or your steps? Those were a GMC factory option for 2021 for the AT4. They're called the AT4 high clearance step. The part number, is 8463047 for the crew cab. But inventory is so constrained that from what I understand, at least in Canada, they took it off the build sheet, it's not even an option. Uh, the dealer should be able to look up that part for you, try and track some down. I barely got mine. They actually had to take them off a showroom truck and put them on mine because mine was a dealer transfer and they hadn't installed them yet. And that dealership kept them at their dealership and they were even on my build list. So when they got to my location, uh, they did the right thing and they're like, you know what? He bought the truck. They say it has the steps. Let's just take them off the one in the showroom. So that's how I got mine. So this one's interesting. Brand new truck, by the way. How can you sleep at night with those Rancho shocks? Well, I've been sleeping pretty well. However, I know what you're talking about. They are not the cream of the crop when it comes to an off-road shock. Are they better than just a standard run of the mill shock? Sure but I have ordered a new pair of Bilsteins, the adjustable ones, you know what I'm talking about, for the front. They're two month back order, it's been a few weeks now, so there will be a video coming up of that install and I'll definitely uh, share with you my impressions, but I'm very excited about that one. So I get asked a lot, why haven't I installed the Pulsar LT? I've, I've read your reviews, I've read your comments. It sounds like a no brainer. I'm probably gonna do it, I'm like 99% now. I do have a video to why I haven't done it yet, uh, link up above, um, but winter is coming. I have a lot of priorities in my life and right now just running V8 full time isn't something that I'm worried about over the next uh, month or two, but I will be driving my truck full time in the winter and it'll probably be something that's nestled nice under the hood and that I'm enjoying. Do you live in Dubai, bro? palm tree yes I do hey I watched your video on the factory OEM GMC illuminated emblem that you installed on your truck and that video about the factory available OEM GMC illuminated emblem seems really cool where do I buy one I'm gonna give you the answer go to GM and ask for the OEM illuminated emblem and they should be able to get it for you guys i'm just teasing i'm using my humor feel free to ask me any questions i know that sometimes a video will just start rolling and you catch it without reading the title so i'm happy to answer your questions don't stop doing that another question i get asked because it's come up in the comments talking about you know dfm and that type of thing and that's sport mode so yes this truck is equipped with sport mode you access it by the dial that shows the trailer picture and says mode Give it a little twist to the right and that'll put it in sport mode and you'll notice right away the shift behavior changes uh, pretty dramatically. 
So I do get asked, what's the overall driving experience like? Well, I've had Yukons, we have an Escalade, I've had three Sierras, I've had a Lincoln Mark LT, I've had a Dodge Ram. I have to say my Denali, the Escalade and this are probably the most comfortable uh, vehicles from a driving experience, whether it be a road trip or around town when it comes to, you know, a truck platform. I will say though that the seats are a little stiff. They could have done better with that, but I'm going to blow everybody's mind right now with this one. If you have a previous generation uh, Sierra, not, not necessarily the one before this, because I'm not hundred percent sure, but if you look at my wife's Cadillac 2016, if you look at my 2013 Sierra and you look at the middle of the seat and you look at where the middle of the steering wheel is, they are offset. This truck, it's nice and in the middle. And I appreciate that. I think that's pretty cool. I don't know if that's really answering a question out there, but it just got me thinking about it. Now the 6.2 liter mated to the 10 speed transmission has just been a dream uh, in all the vehicles that I just previously mentioned. It does stand out as very, very smooth. Uh, you know, it's a luxury truck, but it's still a truck and uh, it works quite well. I have been asked if the airbags that I put in the back make the ride rougher. I gotta be honest with you. Yeah, a little bit but not enough that it's like, oh, I ruined the whole truck. Now, I just keep five pounds in it, like the manufacturer says. There's still a jounce bumper built into the airbag. I've heard people say maybe if you get the bags without that, there's less chance of it bottoming out. I haven't even come close to bottoming out in the back. Guys, it's a truck, I haul stuff around. I want the airbags for the stability. I, I wanna lose you know, the body roll that it had before, which I've achieved. Um, the Rancho shocks could probably be replaced, maybe put Bill Steens back there and that will, uh, you know, soften some of the travel out right initially. It's really just speed bumps and potholes that I notice. Everything else, she just glides over. But uh, I wouldn't change a thing. I like my airbags. I get asked a lot about towing, what the experience is like. Well, I made a couple videos on it already. I did the, uh, the boat and the trailer, about 5,000 pounds without any air suspension. It was just factory, hooked up, drove it and gave you my impressions. Uh, the travel trailer though, you know, that's a uh, 34 feet long, almost uh, like bumper to bumper or, or hitch to bumper. And it was over 8,000 pounds. I had a few hundred pounds of cargo in the box and it drove like a dream. Uh, I had the Sierra with the 6.2 before this. It was a 2013, it was a Denali and it had uh, airbags as well. And this performed better. And the reason I can say that is because, well, I've been able to do the comparison with the same trailer. Uh, this here has a little smaller fuel tank, but this gave better fuel range, but I have to attribute the 10 speed transmission to allowing me to do that. Um, but with the airbags and, you know, towing that trailer in the wind and it was pushing hard and I use a weight distribution hitch with, with anti-sway and, uh, you know, I felt safe. So that's the main thing. Safety when towing, especially when uh, you're getting up there in the max range, that's what you want. And this truck did it no problem. All right, let's talk about all the cool things, the little quirks and features, the things that maybe you typically discover, you know, after you bought a vehicle and you didn't even notice uh, right off the bat. So the very first one is the satellite radio has a built-in DVR, so digital video, or digital video, digital audio recorder, a DAR. I'm not sure if that's the term. Either way, you can rewind your live satellite radio feed. So if it's playing for 10 minutes, you can rewind that 10 minutes. But if you change the station or you turn the vehicle off, it's gonna reset. But the fact that you can do that's pretty cool. I really like, and this one surprised me, I didn't know it had it, and, and some of you viewers caught onto it too in one of my towing videos. But when it knows that you have a hitch connected and you signal, it gives you the camera view. So you got a farther perspective. It gives you the camera view of the corner. So you're able to make round that corner and see where your uh, tire line is and make sure you're not gonna hit the curb or anything like that. And that's pretty cool. Another cool one for you are these mirror LED spotlights. I'll give you a quick demonstration here. But what's nice is you can control them from in the cab and you can have them spotlight both at the same time or the left or the right independently. Now there is a mod out there as well, which I'm looking into maybe doing, which allows me to turn them on with my high beams. The one limitation though is you can't be driving at regular speeds and use these spotlights, but you can be at very slow speeds. I haven't measured how slow, like five miles per hour type thing, and uh, you can have them on, but once you start driving, they just shut off. So there is a mod to change that with the high beams. 
All right, another cool feature, and you might know this already, but you hold down the unlock, and it will roll down all the windows for you. But I should have added an annoying thing. I can't roll them up by holding down lock. It'll fold the mirrors if you have that setting turned on but I cannot roll the windows up unless I turn the vehicle on or the accessory on and then roll them up independently. But it's still cool. This is exhausting. All right, there are more cool things I could probably be talking about and make this video go a lot, lot longer. But they do say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and that's probably the coolest thing. I love the look of this truck. I appreciate all trucks, but I really, really dig the style of this truck. All right, guys, I'm going to do a quick overview of all my mods. There's 20-ish, and they are all pretty much DIY. They're a different level of uh, skill set. So definitely check out all those videos, run the AT4 playlist that I've created for everybody and just let the camera roll. Let's have a look at what we've modded. Definitely get this done professionally, but I have Expel paint protection film over the whole front of the truck, on the mirrors. I have uh, the sides of the doors, the whole back bumper and the tailgate. Get the paint protection film. You will not get the rock chips that you would typically get. I'm pretty sure in the spring when I pull this thing out and wash it really good after the winter. It will be uh, just as minty, I know you guys like that word, as it is today. Paint protection film, gotta have it. Okay, next mod, I put 35% window tint on the front windows. They're really picky in the province that I live in here in uh, Canada. So I'll probably get pulled over and I'll be forced to take it off or I gotta pay a ticket and have uh, points put on my license, which we don't want, but I do love the tint. You may have seen some of my Hyperdip videos, but I do have Hyper dipped wheels, emblems. Takes about one can per wheel, takes about one can to do all your emblems. Uh, this stuff I have no doubt is gonna last years because I applied it properly. I think it looks good for, you know, factory. And uh, don't be afraid to check that out. I recommend it if you do it right, it works good. I have vinyl wrapped my uh, fog light surrounds here. I was gonna do it in the camel. I went with the white. There's probably 30, 40 different white vinyls on the market. I picked between a couple and this one's pretty close. We did the uh, vinyl, uh, camel vinyl on the hood. It's, it's filthy right now because this has been out in the rain for days. We have the vinyl roof. I've uh, tinted the tail lights. Here's some video footage of that. I've taken it off because I think I wanna go darker. Speaking about tint, I did put tint around my headlights. So it's kind of a, a C shape here. Um, the video that I made though is the light smoke. I redid it with dark smoke. I like this better, but uh, that's what I'm going to be doing to the tail lights. That's why I pulled it off. Oh, this truck's so high. Just kidding. Uh, I have the auto start stop eliminator. I like that for a hundred bucks. Definitely well worth it. I just pretty much don't touch the button anymore and don't have to think about it. But if I want to change it back to the default setting, I can touch the button. I installed a 60 inch light bar in the back here and it does have the reverse lights, but I'll give you a tip. Do not tap into the harness back here because it throws off the uh, tow technology and it's just not going to work. So use the Putco harness, which is an aftermarket harness that ties in, which isn't going to give you those electrical problems. So trust me, use the harness. Okay, I've installed one and a half inch spacers. It's got the stance that I like. Uh, they are hub centric. So if you're gonna look at spacers, please get hub centric for safety. These ones have been great for me, no problems. In the video that I made, I said I wasn't gonna tow with them, but I live on the edge, as you know, and I decided that that uh, was something I wanted to test and they towed beautifully. I rechecked everything torque wise, everything's perfect. So I like mine but I'm gonna buy aftermarket wheels at some point, run two sets. The spacers will stay with these because I like the look, but the next set, and I'd always recommend this, buy wheels that have the correct offset that you don't require a spacer. All right, we got the S&B cold air intake. It definitely helps the throttle response, brings it to life. I love that mod. I've got the Airlift Ultimate 5000 airbags. 
That's been a game changer for the towing. And to complement that, I installed my compressor in the engine compartment. And this was a game changer because uh, this way it stays dry, nowhere near any moisture. It actually fits in there, so pretty proud of that one. All right, I got my inexpensive grill overlay, originally all black. They make this version for the SLT and the AT4. I think that's all they make it for. Anyway, um, I zip tied mine in the corners so it doesn't come off and you can't even see the zip ties. I custom painted uh, these pieces white, a little bit of work, but I might actually pick up another one, keep it all black, throw it on for the winter so I don't uh, chip up my paint job and uh, super cheap and I can have the look of the truck change like that. All right, another cool thing, this truck's electric. Let me show you. So if you have the option, and I'm from the future, so I do, you can plug this truck in. You guys know this is for the block heater. So where I live, you die and your truck dies if you don't plug it in in the winter. So uh, that's what this is for. But I love that they concealed it. I think that's great. And then you have this little uh, door that just clips back over top. You never know, that's cool. Another cool thing for you is all the cameras. There's so many cameras on this vehicle, you get 15 different camera views. No, I'm not gonna show you them all because we all know what a camera looks like. All right, who doesn't like an aftermarket exhaust? I got the Borla S-Type quad black chrome tips on here. Here's some more footage of a cold start. Who doesn't love that? It's got a nice bark in the beginning, doesn't drone when you're driving. Uh, pretty obnoxious though, right, when you start it up. Anyway, I did have the uh, original bezels that were on here, and I did paint them in a video, and they turned out pretty good. I would recommend even do more sanding than I did, use even a heavier grit sandpaper, use a primer and a paint if you wanna make them last as long as possible. I knew I was doing this exhaust. Mine lasted long enough and the paint didn't peel uh, until I switched over here. I'm still gonna keep them though, because if I get sick of these tips, I can always put them back on uh, if I wanna go back to that look, because these tips are removable about uh, 18 inches back, and you can just have the pipes, kind of like the factory ones, just come up to that bezel, and you're looking stock. Who can forget the tonneau cover right here? I really like it. I haven't had the water leaks. The only place water is going to come in is right in here, um, but it's not gonna make its way into the front of the bed. Uh, when you install it though, there's a foam seal right there. When I did it as per directions, I didn't like where it was sitting, so I actually relocated it a little further up and it seemed to fit, fit and seal better. I also updated the technology by adding a 4K dash cam, showed you how I wired it up, and in the back is the 1080p rear camera, and so far they've been great. All right, and uh, I think that's most of the mods that I've done to date so far, uh, but don't forget the important one, and that's the console storage for your button collections, if you will. But every mod that I've talked about, if it's available to buy and it's not just something you know I invented, I have put links in my video description below. So feel free to check that stuff out and uh, maybe it'll work for you, maybe it won't, but uh, if you have questions, you can even do further research by going to those links and checking those things out and see if they make sense for you. So if you like today's video, remember hitting that like button is what is going to help propel this video, but more importantly, it's going to get my channel exposed to others, which only helps you make more content. That's how it works. So if you, if you do like it or you, there's a takeaway in here, please hit that like button. Also, subscribing would be a big help, so consider that. I make videos usually on a weekly basis, and uh, talk to you next time.